Good evening, San Diego. I'm Logan Burns. And I'm Jenny Mulkowski in for Ginger Jeffries. Thank you for being here with us. The CDC's vaccine advisors are now... San Diego County is reporting four new cases of the Omicron variant, bringing the county's total cases now to six. So according to the County Health and Human Services Agency, the four newest cases were in people who were fully vaccinated, but they didn't get their boosters. Now, the two previous cases were fully vaxxed and had their boosters. San Diego is also seeing a spike in COVID cases with an additional 646 cases. That's reported just today alone. Officials say the two newest cases are a reminder to get boosted. Well, the city's minimum wage, it's going up. Starting January 1st, 2022, minimum wage goes up to $15 an hour. That's for employees within the city of San Diego who work at least two hours a week. Mayor Ty Gloria, along with other city leaders, gathered today to celebrate. We have been taking steps towards this milestone since 26. Also say hi to Jenny Mulkowski. Jenny, How I are know. you? Welcome. Hi. Welcome. It's good to see you. Air hug from I'm, here. I'm nice and toasty in my little corner yeah. here. You know, I had some uh, poinsettias behind me, and I think our boss man said, no, take them away. I don't no, know. What does that no mean no for kidding. me? No flowers uh, for me. I don't we know. We should put the ones you have down there and put them a little bit higher. I've got okay. a few Maybe we over can here I can, I can share with you. Well, she doesn't eat poinsettias. She just, she's a beautiful flower. Oh, anyway, so. I like you. That's what it was. <laughs> That's what it was. All right. there, there, there was too much beauty over there with the poinsettias <laughs> and you. It That's was overload. Say, you know what? We don't want to distract the viewers. She doesn't eat poinsettias. She yeah, just, yeah. That's just, what it is. I, That's what I, it is. I need all... Well, police are looking for a man that was part of a police chase in Chula Vista yesterday. The suspect also has several criminal charges. 25-year-old Tyler Turner is wanted for domestic violence, criminal threats, child endangerment, and also evading police. He was last seen in an apartment complex in the 6,000 block of Reflection Drive. That's in Mission Valley. So the chase, by the way, started in Chula Vista around 4.30 yesterday when police were following a Jeep Patriot. Now, at one point, the driver jumped out. The passenger, who was believed to be Turner, took off in the car. Reports say that chase went through several streets and highways ending in Mission Valley. Now, if you do have any information to watch, because it almost seems like there's no uh, interdepartmental communication where they just signed off on something and didn't, you know, reconfer to say, hey, is this a good idea? Yeah, you would think that as conditions change on the ground, that policies would change in City Hall or up at Sacramento. That is exactly correct. And as these, look, they did it to begin with, right? They shifted in a big way and said, look, we're going to lock you all down inside, but we're going to give you the opportunity to build outside. So they already changed those rules and changed those laws temporarily. What these folks are saying is if these same conditions are going to remain as an emergency, then allow us to keep these things that are allowing us to stay alive during this emergency. So yes, adapt the laws, adapt the rules to the conditions on the ground. And if the conditions on the ground today were nobody had coronavirus and nobody has to wear masks and nobody was afraid, then perhaps there wouldn't be any reason for emergency measures. But if we're still in an emergency, let's keep the emergency measures going, which means keeping these businesses alive. And all the money they invested, 100,000 bucks to build this thing. You think this guy had 100,000 bucks to build? We no. had, he was selling nothing at that time. No, it's crazy. When they do yes, we try to remain objective, but when things don't make sense, yeah. you just have you to, have to call you just up. have to call these people on it. When yeah. I do, I want to say two things, Dan. So I moved here from uh, a different city, from Chicago, and it was cold. So it's, it's a shock to me that there aren't more outdoor spaces like this. So they should just let them keep these spaces forever. We live in a city where we're paying sunshine tax anyway. Let us enjoy the outside. And number two, I come from a family of small business owners. So it's like you said earlier, uh, maybe all these people should, you know, have a year or two of trying to run a business and see if they would still be making these same decisions. Yeah, walk a mile in my shoes and then make this decision. Don't sit in your ivory tower. By the way, City Hall hasn't even been open for two years. So they've been sort of making all these decisions behind closed doors in the dark, not facing anybody face to face in person. All of these decisions are being made in this vacuum that they've created for themselves the whole time. And you know, decisions are made differently when you're in a vacuum as opposed to when a light is shining on you and people are looking in your eyes. I think it's time for that vacuum to open up and let the public come in and let people actually look at you in your face and say, look, you're killing us out here. Throw us a bone. Do the right thing. Adjust and adapt to the conditions on the ground. Don't stick with this one size fits all thing that is trickling down to all of us in our community. So yeah, and not only that, but these patios are going to stay, as you mentioned, 
they are going to stay. There is a plan to have outdoor patios stay forever and ever, but you have to meet certain restrictions and certain guidelines in order to get that. And if you go up against the city, as these guys are, as they try to reapply for this permit, oh, that could be a whole nother story. There could be retribution coming down from City Hall. You know, they don't like to be challenged over there at City Hall. They like to do what they do and they move on and everybody agrees. All the sycophants that they're surrounded by, oh yes sir, this is a great decision. Well, they haven't talked to the real people out in the real world about this stuff and they, they would, they'll get a whole different view. Not only that, but with November in the election coming up in 2022, I think all of them are gonna get a whole different view. Believe me. We're in Old Town, you guys. Throw yeah. it back to you. Yeah, I do wish you'd open up more about this uh, topic, but one day we'll get you to talk more. But in the end, we do wish, you know, the, bu the business is the best because these are the backbone of everything. So, Mulkowski Jenny. is in the house with Logan Burns and Francella yeah. Perez. What is yeah. going on around here? Everybody's like going like this. Oh, we're, we're raised, like what so is this, thrilled. from the 90s? Oh, we're, we're bringing back, back the 90s. Yes. Well, I have a Rubik's Cube over here, too, if you're interested. <laughs> we're going to play Pac-Man later. Back here. <laughs> but you know what the point is is that you know we're so happy that you're here I'm so. happy that you're having me here well we're gonna stick on that good note we've got San Diego firefighters who are helping more than 300 families with meals for this holiday season it's an annual holiday dinner giveaway that's taking place this weekend it's gonna help people in Logan Heights San Ysidro and City Heights Mike Cam Camberos who is the president of one of the hosting organizations Bomberos de San Diego is here to give us all the details hello to you sir Hi, Jenny. It was nice meeting you. Thank you for having me on. I know. It's so nice to virtually meet you as well. Um, first of all, you're doing such a wonderful thing. For people who are not aware of this event, uh, please tell us all about it. So we are a separate nonprofit organization made up mostly of San Diego City firefighters. And we are a community service-based organization. We volunteer our time and we are hosting, uh, through our fundraising efforts, we are hosting a food uh, donation giveaway to uh, pre-selected families. We get assistance from the neighboring um, school districts to select, we have 300 meals that are gonna be going out to different families. And like you said, the three areas of San Ysidro, uh, City Heights and Southcrest. Um, it's gonna be this Saturday from nine to 11. Uh, we get a lot of support from uh, donations from uh, SDG and &E, Northgate, Sawaya Markets and uh, hosting the food. We have Smart and Final and a grocery outlet. Um, I have so many questions. Number one, Bomberos, how long have you guys been around and how, how did that organization kind of come about? Because it's such a great thing. Um, it started in 1889, um, even before I became a firefighter. Um, and what it was is a group of firefighters decided they wanted to give back more to the community. Um, a lot of us work in you know some of the busy stations in San Diego and kind of get to see the poverty in these uh, little pockets of our city. And it was a way for them to kind of do something extra, more than just becoming a firefighter. So they formed a 501c3, and it was just a way to give back. So we have fundraisers throughout the year. And we're able to give back in the form of um, scholarships. Um, uh, we could give away $13,000 this year in scholarships. And we do this food uh, donation giveaway. And, you know, any families in need, we kind of, on a case-by-case -case basis, help out whenever we can. I just love that because it's not like you're not doing enough already as a firefighter, risking your life, you know, protecting us. Um, so many good people. You just make me smile just talking about it that you guys are doing this. I want to talk specifically about the event. I know these families are already pre-selected. How did you pick these families? Um, so we get the help of the uh, school districts in the area who, um, through the camp counselors, kind of identify um, families in need, and we kind of spread out the 300 um, based on the locations, and the schools will select, you know, 20 from this school, 10 from that school, and, you know, be given a voucher to show up to one of those locations, one of those three locations, and receive a free meal. Uh, we're going to be giving away a, a turkey, stuffing, potatoes, uh, canned vegetables, and we also have some uh, toys for the kids as well. So this is happening Saturday, and I'm sure you already have a plethora of volunteers who are going to be helping out. But if someone is watching right now at home and is thinking, hey, I want to get involved maybe, if not this year, then next year, what can they do? Can people just come out and help? We Yes. Um, on our website, we actually do kind of post the events that we're having, and we're always looking for volunteers. Um, as you can see on the screen, bomedosasandiego.org. Um, volunteers are always welcome. We are, like I said, community service based. And although we're made up mostly of San Diego firefighters, we're not exclusive to San Diego firefighters. Anyone could join our organization and help kind of put on these events with us. 
Um, and we also have a link if you want to support financially. We're always looking for that as well. Just go ahead and go on to our website and click the link uh, for the event and you can help us out financially. We appreciate anything we can get. Yeah, Mike, while you're talking, we have that link up. So hopefully people are clicking on it and learning more. Um, any parting words? I just want to ask, how do you feel, you know, being part of such a great organization and again, this awesome event uh, this Saturday? Well, I think I can speak for most of us. I mean, we have a very rewarding career, but this just kind of takes it uh, more, makes it more personalized when we're able to kind of all the work we put in throughout the year on this organization, we're able to actually see the faces of, of how it helps. It's actually very rewarding, kind of gives us a warm, you know, warm feeling in our hearts. Yeah, you're telling me. And in just talking to you, I'm like, what am I doing with my life? I need to do something a little bit better, just like you are. So hopefully you're motivating people at home. Mike, thank you for being here. Uh, good luck this Saturday, and hopefully we'll see you soon. Yeah. Oh, there's a three box. Oh, sorry, it's I slipped this box. monitor for the first time. We got Jenny Malkowski in the house. And over there. I, can I just say, I don't know how much time we have. Sorry if I'm stealing time. We got Having three Jennifer hours. Jennifer Milkman Milkowski wow. in this building wow. has been an instant upgrade. Wow. Literally <laughs> from minute one, Logan. Y'all like, know I don't have like any money. money. I can't one. pay you. It's for like this. going from coach to first class, <laughs> it's, it's and the, you're on a trip to no, Europe, it, and it, they hand you a glass of champagne. It's like, and she's the, it's like she's the pilot too. It's been I remarkable. don't know. There, I got cordon bleu. I got lobster. So, what happened? What do you all I just, want from me? I just I want you to keep doing you. That's what okay. I want. It's really, do it's just really you, good Jenny, to have you. Just do, do you. Well, come on. Oh, so, but on a serious note, I'm happy to be here. Also, it got it. cold. It was really hot in my corner, and now it's cold. I'm going to be that nice. one in here that's always like, oh, can you fix the temperature cold. again? <laughs> they call it the blast chiller, I believe. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, did she's fixing it. Blast... <laughs> I know I'm supposed to look in the monitor when I talk to you guys, but I don't care. I know. I keep You're looking at there. you here. That doesn't matter. Right whatever. Here. It's fine. <laughs> it, it doesn't matter. Also, Logan, why don't you bring me flowers anymore? <laughs> Welcome back. It's 537. So Bruce Springsteen has reportedly sold the rights to his music for a record-breaking half a billion dollars with a B. So the New York Times is reporting the sale to Sony Music Entertainment. It says the deal would be the largest ever for an artist's catalog. This sale includes the boss's work as both a sing songwriter and a singer. Springsteen now joins other legendary artists like Bob Dylan and Shakira, who have sold their catalogs as well. So with me now to tell us what this sale could mean for the music industry, what it means for other artists, is George Varga, a music critic from the San Diego Union Tribune. Uh, George, they say video killed the radio star, so is streaming killing or has it killed the music industry as well? Well, thanks. Thank you, Francella. Hey, Betty White wants everyone to celebrate her centennial birthday. Can you believe it? This is great. The actress turns 100 on January 17th, only three days after my birthday. Take Whoa. notes. Logan, get out your pencil. Okay. Here, you want to toss you a pen? No? Okay. <laughs> uh, the Golden Girl is inviting all her fans to a special movie event. Betty White, 100 years young birthday celebration. It follows the national treasure as she just goes out and about in her... Well, the 133rd Tournament of Rose Parade returns to the streets of Pasadena on New Year's Day. And this year, it's going to feature the San Diego Zoo, which is going to have a float in the parade. The float incorporates the heart of the San Diego Zoo, Wildlife Alliance Conservation. You can see them assembling the float, which will feature the wildlife that the Alliance works to protect. Now, this all matches this year's theme, which is dream, believe, and achieve. So while this event historically celebrates California-grown foliage, the parade will actually include flowers from Colombia, Thailand, Africa, Ecuador. The parade starts at 8 in the morning, New Year's Day. Wow. I've heard that a lot of people view the parade from elsewhere in the country where it's snowing and cold and they see all of us enjoying the sunny weather here in California and they decide to move on out here yeah. because of the parade. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who's even so. up that early on New Year's Day, though? 8 a.m.? Yeah. yeah. I still could watch it. Just getting know, home, maybe? <laughs> I usually do the replay. You know, I watch it later on, you know, by late morning. Yeah, we'll hope you'll join us tonight for the KOSI News at 10 and 11. Until then, we've got Bruce Springsteen performing Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Have a great night.